We've just heard about the rampant anti-Israel atmosphere sweeping across U.S. college campuses. And it's no secret that today's youth do not have as strong a connection to Israel as previous generations. And so while the future of Israel diaspora relations may seem bleak, there are organizations that are working to strengthen and preserve this special connection. One such organization is Mosaic United, which aims to empower Jewish youth to develop deeper connections to their Jewish heritage and encourage them to forge a bond with Israel. And here to tell us more about this important endeavor is CEO of Mosaic United, Rabbi Benjamin Levy. Welcome. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. So let's jump right in. First of all, can you tell us a little bit about Mosaic United and your overall mission? Yeah, so um, it's actually very exciting to look at the 12 to 35 year olds across the, across the globe, mm -hmm. regardless of affiliation, dom denomination, geography, demography, anything like that, and to think what are the key stations that are going to connect these people and allow them to connect themselves to Jewish identity and to Israel. Mm -hmm. And so really what we do is to empower those two main areas and to give them the tools to be able to empower themselves. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk a little bit about Jewish youth in the diaspora, right? It's no secret that many of them don't have as strong a connection to Israel as, let's say, their parents or previous generations, and even to their Jewish identity. So, I mean, why do you think this is happening? I mean, it's the million dollar question. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure anyone has one answer. I don't think there is an answer. I think there are some approaches. I think, first of all, we often look to them and say, you know, it's their fault that they don't. And I think sometimes we need to look to ourselves and say, you know, we've got an incredible product. It's called Judaism. We've got an amazing country, an amazing state. It's called Israel. But are we really the right salesman? Are we really giving it to them in a palatable, packageable way that they can truly engage with it in their own way, in their own space, in their own time and see it as relevant and meaningful and engaging? Mm -hmm. And I think one of the real problems is our ability to really understand where they are. You know, there's so many mixed messages going on. There's so many things happening. There's so many distractions. And yet at the same time, we have to make a real claim and a real obvious way for them to be able to say, there's a value add to my life. This is something that can be meaningful to me. And I think it's that dissonance between mm -hmm. their capacity to concentrate on the one thing when there's so many competing messages. You know, the fact that at the end of the day, it's convenient to just sit and watch Netflix. It's convenient to just go out with friends. It's not always fun to go into the traditional way. Coupled with the fact that we aren't making, you know, an incredible statement to say, this is relevant to your life. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, though, we do see some Jewish youth who who are very aware, I guess, of what is going on in Israel, and yet they're taking sort of the opposite stance, sort of joining the BDS movement. We have organizations like Jewish Voice for Peace who are doing the opposite. So how, do you ex how would you explain that? I think that we live in a, an extreme generation. We're extremely apathetic about things we're apathetic about, and we're extremely passionate about things we're passionate mm -hmm. about. And if we want to see something to do that we think is right, we'll go until the end and vice versa. So people that see something that they're passionate about, they want to really go and be part of that. They really want to advocate on that behalf. I think there's a part of each and every one of us that's looking for that, you know, David versus Goliath and always to look for the David. And I think the positioning of today, um, you know, in the broader world is that Israel has taken on more of a Goliath status and, um, you know, some other, other areas around, whether it's, you know, certain treatment with the Palestinian people, etc., has taken on more of a David status. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's necessarily correct, but we love to get behind the David against the Goliath, and I mm -hmm. think that's part of it. So it's the passionate approach, regardless of what the cause is, and if they feel connected in that way, they'll go until the end. So ideally, we have to get these youth to become passionate once again for Israel. I, I think that what we need to do is let them be informed. Because a lot of what's defining what they do, the reason they see it in such black and white terms, David and Goliath, these type of things, from my conversation with them on campus and in different places, mm -hmm. is because they aren't seeing the depth and the nuance and the complexity of this vibrant place. You know, mm -hmm. we're 70 years young, but we're also 70 years old and a lot has happened. And it's very difficult to capture it in a soundbite. Mm -hmm. It's very important to open that literacy to Judaism, to Israel, and to deepen their understanding, just like every other area of their life, mm -hmm. whether it's, you know, social, whether it's intellectual, whether it's commercial, they're much more engaged in terms of the depth of understanding. Mm -hmm. When it comes specifically to their approach to Israel, again, in general terms, people that are just seeing it in sound bites, perhaps it's not on the same level, and we need to be able to deepen that experience. Okay. So how do we do that? Let's sort of delve into some of the projects that 
Mosaic United runs. I know you've just launched a new program, the Shalom Corps. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? So we're very excited about the Shalom Corps. It goes to the heart of what you're saying. We've done it in partnership with the Jewish Agency. Mm -hmm. um, and we're partnering with incredible other organizations like Olam, who are collaborating with us to build the field. Israel, who's doing amazing things around the world. The community of Toronto. Essentially what it is, mm -hmm. is a Jewish Peace Corps for the world. A Jewish Alter Peace Corps. A Jewish mm -hmm. Peace Corps for the world. Meaning that... You know, we have this incredible Jewish value of tikkun olam. And it's a particular value, but it also is a universal value. And we want the youth of today to understand what's particular and what's universal about it, to be able to tap into that. And we want them to feel empowered on a local, on a global, and on a special projects basis between our three different tracks that we're offering, mm -hmm. to be able to say, how can they help the world? How can they heal the fractured world around them? It could be doing trips to Kenya, to Ethiopia. It could be doing trips in their local communities. It could be helping in old age homes, and it could be helping out with youth movements. We want to see people much more engaged and part of their experience because volunteering starts at home mm -hmm. and it teaches us a character. You know, I think that a lot of back to your previous question but relating to this a lot of the problem is that the traditional forms of Judaism whether it's keeping the Sabbath or Shabbat keeping kosher and dietary requirements doesn't necessarily speak in the same language today but at the end of the day that can't monopolize what Judaism has to offer there's also chesed, there's also kindness, there's compassion, there's a tzedakah, there's charity, all these different other components and they're just as Jewish because at the end of the day, the Mishnah says al shloshad varim olam amed that the world stands on three things: Torah, avodah, and gemilut chasadim. Of course, Torah and learning, but also avodah, which is service, and also gemilut chasadim, which is being compassionate and loving in how you behave. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a language that's going to speak to the next generation. I see the Shalom Corps as the next big thing for the Jewish people. I can see volunteers from around the world wanting to engage in meaningful service between the scores of incredible programs that exist. And we want to try help that caliber raise you know, its ability to be able to galvanize more and more people to engage in it. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, deepen the impact so it's real Jewish learning and a real opportunity to connect to those values. So it's not just telling them, come to Israel, volunteer in Israel. It's volunteer in your own community, volunteer in places in the world where you feel you want to go and volunteer. But do it from a Jewish perspective, and while you're doing this, sort of learn about your Jewish values. We want to give a buffet of options. Those that want to come to mm -hmm. Israel, there's going to be incredible options through amazing programs. Those that want to do it in their own community, we're creating centralized systems in every single individual community, mm -hmm. which are piloting in Toronto to be able to have, you know, one opportunity that if you want to engage in any way in volunteering. And again, cross-border experiences, these episodic opportunities where you can go into different communities around the world. You know, my sister, my one sister went to Alice Springs to volunteer with Aboriginal people through a Jewish framework. My other sister went to Africa. She's a doctor and helped deliver babies um, for a few months to help in that way. And, and they felt that their Judaism really came to life. Mm -hmm. And I think that regardless of where it is, we need to empower people, people to be able to engage through their Jewish values. Okay. Well, Rabbi Levy, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Thank you. And that's one of our ten pillars so I'm looking forward to discussing in the future. Absolutely. Chag Sameach. Chag Sameach. Thank you. Thank you.